But Sibis and Gus set out on a quest. To win in Santa's festive games and pass the test. Victorious, they reach the pub, the Nutcracker, so bold, celebrated with a drink, feeling so sweet and so cold. Well, hello, my name is still slightly weird. I still have no idea what I'm doing in this game, but more importantly, you just listened to a poem given to me by an AI. This statement might raise some questions along the lines of, the hell is he talking about this time? So let me explain. Or actually, one better, let the AI explain itself. And how would that work? Well, there there is this thing called chat GPT. You might have seen or heard of it in the last few weeks, where you write something into this box and then it answers you. All done automatically. And like that, our question what chat GPT even is, is being answered. With a long paragraph with fancy words. But this is where the cool part comes in, as we now ask it to tell us the information in simple terms, which is instantly done for us. And we get an answer that us mortal humans could also understand, but the paragraph is still very long, isn't it? So through the power of simply asking, let's make it shorter. Which, good guys we are, is of course done for us. And that brings us to the answer that ChatGPT is a chatbot program that uses machine learning to generate responses to text input in a way that resembles human conversation. Quite simple, isn't it? So now that you know the basics of how this is done, you can see how it was merely a few steps away from getting a winter poem about RuneScape. We're simply just explaining the situation we're stuck in and ask for a poem nicely. We are served swiftly and actually surprisingly well, as this is a decent poem. It's just a little bit too long for an intro though, so I ask for just the four lines and those were pretty much the ones you heard earlier. Could the poem be better? I guess. Does it make sense? Not really. But I have to say it's a lot of fun chatting with this thing and getting answers. This might even delay certain tasks that you were supposed to be doing, like, well, let's say, making a RuneScape video. So I simply just connected the two. And that's how we ended up here. Perfectly dressed in a pub where they are serving a little bit of liquor. All of it has something to do with this message, essentially telling us about the winter event that Bulby well, we will be taking part in. And wouldn't you know, Lumbridge, the place to be once again the starting point for our adventure. And given the fact that I once again have no idea where to go or what to do, we consult the map, as apparently the event was added somewhere in here. I mean, obviously, kind of has to, I guess. So after something that can only be described as a perfectly systematic and incredibly efficient search, and definitely not me just wobbling the camera around to look at a bunch of places, I eventually found this intriguing icon surrounded by a white area. Might be the place? Hovering the icon tells us holiday event? Yeah, still uncertain, but definitely worth checking out. But first, something that I've grown quite accustomed to now after multiple, well, let's call them journeys, Preparation at the bank. This time around not too difficult, merely just getting rid of everything. But the emergency fish, I always bring some of those. And after re-equipping my armor, getting rid of a bunch of the Halloween stuff, I once again was off. Where to? I wasn't quite sure. I've been in the general area, but I've never been this far out, so quite exciting. I also have to report that I didn't really make it that far without beating up a goblin, as is tradition nowadays. But I made my way down deeper into the adventure, with the ever so slight distraction, but despite all odds, I actually made it to this point. Because here, instead of turning left, we are turning right, entering new territory. Despite the Halloween event being over, this is quite a spooky place. Dead trees, big ass mansion, spiders, of course. Intriguing, I have to say. But definitely a place for another time, I'm sure, as I for once try to get to my destination without any major distractions. Truth be told, we had minor ones already, so anyways, in the distance, we can already see, we're close. I just have to make it past some barbarians, but turns out they're not too hostile, so I flawlessly executed that, of course. You know, walking, I guess. And with that, surprisingly uneventful journey ends, and we have reached our destination. Looks like the entry to a club, people standing in line, red carpet, makes sense, yeah? As it kind of lines up with the goals of this event, but one thing after another. The one thing is, in this case, the first thing I just talked to the first guy that is standing outside, this being Gus Mistletoe, proclaiming there's not much time left. For those of you that actually listen to my poem, he is part of the story. I make a fatal mistake and ask if he's okay, which, well, conversation. And I once again, ever so elegantly, manage to get myself involved 
absorbed into someone else's business. Or problems, rather. And as this is going on for a few minutes, here's a little bit of a... Too long, didn't read. So, essentially, Gus wants to get inside the pub, but you can only enter if you're winning the Santa's festive games. But poor guy was trying every year only to fall short in the finals all the time. So this is where I come in, as his plan is to rig the games, trying to win it that way. We both take part in the games, meet in the finals, and I let him win. Pretty simple. Or that's rather what I would have done if I didn't get distracted by getting to know our competition. First guy appears to be a talking bucket. His strategy being, if I can see them, they can see me. I wish him the best of luck and somehow have the information that Santa told us we aren't allowed things on our back in the games. But does it look like he plays by the rules? Ah. He makes his own. Thank god we cleared that up. Next up, Guy with the Monkey. This one informs me about his training regime. His secret to success, he hasn't slept for 12 days. And after conversing with Gizmo the Monkey, I inform the two that technically he's not allowed to bring something on his back. But don't worry, they're sneaky. I'm starting to sense a pattern. Small one. Well, and then there's those two guys. It is Bobby the Gnome Child, who appears to be just a little different according to his father, which nets me a hug from the guy, which, you know, quite nice actually. Which brings us to one guy further, Paola. But she can't talk too long, she gotta go fast. As apparently, fast is better. Pretty sure there's different theories on that, but slightly different topic as well. I'm trying to keep it family friendly here, but after asking to put down that giant clock, I'm pretty sure this conversation was no accident. Especially finishing the conversation with saying that the goose hasn't moved an inch. Nice. Paola simply mentioning on the side that she kind of knows what we could serve for dinner in the pub. Lovely people around here. Which brings us, well, to said goose. Upon examination, I now know that this is a humble goose, but question if they drink beer. Only one way to find out. The conversation's rather short to keep the past conversation going, you know. Anyways, all of that nonsense brings us to the actual main guy. The bouncer, I guess. He instantly greets me with my name, which is always a very suspicious in my opinion. But then again, you know, local hero and stuff. On the other hand, not too surprising that people already know me. I tell him that I want to be one of the contenders to this game, but there's also this little favor that I need. This apparently depends on whether I was nice or not, which I obviously was. The favor being secretly signing up Gus to the tournament as well, because he doesn't have the best standing anymore after failing, well, every single year. Telling us stories about he can't come because of foster kittens seemed to have worked. All of that brings us back to the guy with the foster kittens and telling him that our plan is a success so far, with the only downside being that he might need to get some foster kittens for himself. He's then revealing to me that he's been trying for 21 years, which comes surprisingly close to the RuneScape age. How very interesting. Anyways, Gus has snow doubts I'll do well in the competition, and they say my puns are bad. And with that, I'm ready to go. I click the portal, getting ready to enter, but forced conversation, as I need to solve a Christmas riddle. What do you get when you meet a vampire in the winter? Looking at the answers, it was very obvious that Frostbite is the answer, but I really wanted to know what happens if you do one of the other two. So I chose Killed, as I found that pretty funny, just to find out nothing happens, nothing. There's just, you know, it, it was wrong and we do another one. But after confirming that I know what a mistletoe is, we are finally allowed to enter. But I almost missed one detail, as I must not be wearing anything on my back. I wish someone would have told me that earlier. Well, fine. I dropped my incredible cape, losing around one armor, which would have pretty sure made all the difference, but I'm finally able to enter. Well, this place here. First impression, it's looking quite nice. Second impression is actually even better as we're greeted by this lady. Once again, she knows my name already and is then explaining how the first game works. I have to say, only after playing I really understood what I was actually doing, so I have an idea. Why would I do the work? I'll just show you the actual gameplay. All the while, there's a beautiful poem. I picked up with skill and grace. grace. But careful not to carry too much in this race. In this race. I gave to others with a cheerful smile. smile. Helping them along for just a little while Wiley. But as the game went on the colded pile Piling. But Sibis knew we had to go the extra mile uh, Miling. I strategized and moved with speed Speeding. Picking up coal with all I could plead Pleading. Coal, 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 it's, it's all, all about the coal Gotta pick it up and make sure it's whole Avoid the eliminations and, and aim for the win. win In Santa's festive games, let, let the coal begin, begin. 
ho, ho, ho. It's all about the coal. Gotta pick it up and make sure it's whole. Avoid the eliminations and aim for the win. Santa's festive games, let the coal begin. Not sure if that helped you in any way to even understand what the game was about, or if it was helpful at all, to be honest. <laughs> Understandable if you skip to this very part here now, but regardless. Just in case, the game is about coal, wouldn't you know? Essentially, pick up coal, give it to opponents, but the tricky part is, once you're above 100, you're out, but you're always giving all the coal you have, so there's a high risk, high reward type of playstyle here. But to be honest, it was merely just clicking on people and yeah, wasn't too hard. Eventually you beat the last guy and the lady congratulations. Congratulates you on a job well done, opening up the passage into the next room. Once there, I see three hoppers, a guy, and a bunch of conveyor belts, and lots of confusion. You know, as is customary. So let's talk to a gnome instead, and let him explain what the hell is even happening here. But once again, a little bit of a summary. Essentially the idea- Wait, 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 what is that music? Oh, oh no. Again with the AI poem. Gingerbread game's on, Tibbis is ready. To earn the most points, it feels so steady. Watching for the other sabotaging of mine. Try to crumble your bread, leave you far behind. But Tibbis and the others in the race to the top. In the gingerbread game they would never stop bread. so here's to you but Zib is the brave may your Christmas be filled with gingerbread to save Rumble. I'll swear that was the last one. Also, as little as they're helpful to actually explain what's going on, those are really nice to elaborate to not make videos at 4am with severe sleep deprivation. You're welcome. For the game itself, you actually didn't miss much as the game was as good as me making music, as it was literally just click the guys on the ground and put it into your hopper. And that was it. And the best part of the game was actually that it was over and we could move on. Sounds like an edgy joke, but that is my genuine thoughts actually. But be that as it may. We've done it. We've overcome several massive challenges and I challenged you by making your ears bleed. So we've all been through a lot to deserve the grand finale. Let's talk to the snowball champion who baits us with a podium because sadly there is none. We wait for the other games to finish and look who's there. Guess our plan is still on as Gus also seems to be part of the finale. So let's just ask him I guess how he intends to play this out now. Here we learn that he very well has played this before and actually knows how to play. I feel a little betrayed but at the same time he has some valuable information. For example there is yellow and white snow. I don't know how we feel about that but essentially it's a last man standing snowball fight that we're about to take part in. So let's do this. As promised before I will spare you yet another musical masterpiece. So let's jump right into the gameplay. We stock up with snowballs and then you would not believe we click on our opponents. Automatically throwing the snowball Snowball hitting them, but hold up, there's also a mechanic where we have to dodge stuff. That's new for me. I have to say this adds something to the, well, let's call this here combat. I wonder if I will encounter this in the actual gameplay as well, as this was actually surprisingly fun. Every now and then the yellow snow appears, and after picking up, the next throw deals massive amounts of damage. But that's also pretty much it. We obviously spare our good guy Gus over here, and slowly but surely clear out the opponents, which leads us to this scene. And apparently this calls for one thing only, sudden death snowball. Obviously, I mean, why do I even have to say that? Also, Gus being ever so subtle. I'm pretty much now stuck in a Wild West duel, but with snowballs. We're getting right into it. I let Gus throw and he then just hits the other guy for some reason. It's at that point we learned that in previous games, apparently there was a dwarf doing the exact same thing to sneak into the pub. The plot thickens. Anyways, let's try again. We are waiting for the countdown. And then this. All my time playing this game, asking questions questions lead up to this point, what will I do? Dodge the attack or let the ball hit me? It all boils down to the age-old question, am I the hero or am I the villain? And technically the question also is, which implies what action? Is the hero really letting some guy cheating win the game? Or is the hero exposing the fraud and just take the win for himself? Or is that villain behavior? Really difficult questions. But you know, holiday spirit and you know, we've come this far in the plan, obviously. We let him hit us. What I was not prepared for is yellow snow. And off I go. You won't believe, but I did that without AI's help actually. But back to heroics, uh, that seemed to have done it. No one seems to even remotely care where I am or how I'm doing and we declare Gus the winner. He's finally allowed into the pub and also gets a plus one. As a fair gesture, Gus does invite me in, but I seem to not be able to respond right now. It's a bit worrying. 
to be honest. God knows where I am or in what condition, but I have to watch as Gus invites the other guy. But wouldn't you know, happy end after all. Of course, I mean I'm the hero, right? We're also in the Nutcracker pub. Trying to get some explanation from Gus what happened turns out to be a little bit complicated, as not only did we smash that, he also is, which cuts the conversation relatively short, leaving us with just a hint by the bartender that all the beer in here is actually alcohol free. Yet again, I am left very confused. Oh Gus. And all of that ends the winter event and we're getting this virtual handshake by the development team and also a few cosmetics as rewards of course. I'm instantly going for some form of a holiday fashion show which eventually leads me to this look. And pretty much everything that is left is after suiting up myself I follow suit to the developers holiday wishes. And even though I'm a bit late I wish you all the same. But before I go I will actually leave you with one last Last very disturbing little detail about this whole story. You know, let's end on the high note. On my way out I said goodbye to the lady and she then informed me that she is actually dead and so is everyone we have just came across. And if that isn't spooky enough I asked her if I was on the good or bad list and turns out naughty list it is. That will definitely make future decisions a little bit easier for me now that I know that I'm actually the villain.